सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर सरफेस केमिस्ट्री कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ कोलॉइड्स आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन दिस पार्ट एंड देयर इज सम स्मॉल पॉइंट्स आर आल्सो व्हिच आर इंपॉर्टेंट राइट सो लेट्स वी मूव ऑन दिस पार्ट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर प्योरिफिकेशन एंड कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ कोलॉइड प्योरिफिकेशन ऑफ कोलाइडल सोल्यूशन और दिस इज जनरली एज वी नो प्योरिफिकेशन इज रिड्यूसिंग अमाउंट ऑफ इम्प्योरिटीज दिस इज प्योरिफिकेशन मैथड्स वन इज कॉल्ड डायलिसिस इट इज अ प्रोसेस ऑफ रिमूविंग डिजोल्व सब्सटेंस फ्रॉम कोलाइडल सोल्यूशन बाय मीन्स ऑफ डिफ्यूजन थ्रू अटेबल मेमरी वी हैव अ बैग इन विच वी पुट दैट इन विच वी पुट कोलाइडल सोल्यूशन एंड द बैग द पोर्स ऑफ बैग थ्रू पोर्स ऑफ बैग ओनली सॉल्यूट पार्टिकल्स मूव ऑन अदर कोलाइडल पार्टिकल रिमेन इन दैट बैग सो दैट प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड कोलाइडल दैट प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड डायलिसिस राइट यू कैन सी अ बैग इन विच होल्स थ्रू विच solution particles can pass and colloid particle remain it is the sol particles these are colloidal particles and this is crystallized when no electricity provide this process is called dialysis when we provide electricity when we uh, um, uh, 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 put a electric field here applied electric field here in that case this process uh, little bit uh, Uh, with higher rate and uh, the rate of the process increase and that will be termed as uh, electrodialysis so dialysis is a very slow process actually that's why electrodialysis is better than dialysis and this bag is called dialysis hemodialysis is based on this process hemodialysis of kidney uh, we know whenever uh, uh, due to uh, non functional sometimes uh, uh, kidney will would not work uh, in many people so uh, before transplant we can uh, um, uh, that uh, doctors uh, or medical team uh, can uh, uh, put uh, that uh, person uh, uh, on a, a hemodialysis so through hemodialysis uh, that uh, impurities uh, filtered through blood right so hemodialysis is based on this concept electrodialysis right so this is dialysis and here we are going to electrodialysis the so very uh, similar both the process are very similar dialysis can be made faster by applying electricity right and the one more method is ultra filtration it is the process generally we have, we know uh, that uh, uh, colloid cannot be filtered by simple filter paper only true solutions uh filtered by simple filter paper but colloids cannot be or even we can say uh, that uh, colloids cannot be uh, filtered by simple filter paper true solutions uh, cannot be filtered by uh, simple filter paper colloids cannot cannot be filtered by simple filter paper only crystallite or suspension can be filtered by simple filter paper so need to if we need to filter colloids in that case we need ultra filter paper ultra filter paper making by reducing size of pores size of pores in general filter paper and it is uh, reduced by using colloidal solution the usual colloidal solution is 4% solution of nitrocellulose in a mixture of alcohol and ether an ultra filter paper may be prepared by soaking the filter paper in colloidal solution hardening by formaldehyde and finally drying it it is just a general process that pores of uh, um, so j- simple filter paper uh, covered by this uh, colloidal solution and then hardening so the hardening the pores size of pores increase and hence it is enabled to pass colloidal uh, colloidal particles right uh 
now so these three are important uh, uh, purification methods one is dialysis other one is electrolysis and ultra filtration one one is also sometimes used which is ultra centrifugation i forget to uh, mention here that ultra centrifugation is also very very important process right uh, through ultra centrifugation uh, we can uh, uh, separate uh, plasma uh, from uh, um, blood corpuscles and we can separate blood corpuscles blood corpuscles almost has a size in the range of colloidal particles and even by ultra centrifugation we can separate different size of uh, uh, blood uh, we can separate um, blood corpuscles according to their size even right so ultra centrifugation one more important method which is used for separate colloidal particles ultra centrifugation method is based on ultra centrifugation method is based on the differential densities of components of mixture those have high density they remain at the bottom of the test tube and those have uh load less density remain at the top of the density when test tube filled with mixture spun rapidly with great speed so ultra centrifugation is also very very important now the properties of colloidal solution the properties of solution here colligative properties that we had discussed in solution chapter but we know number of particles number of uh, uh, particles in colloids are generally aggregated associated particles or large size particles so th it is very clear the number of particles are very less as compared to solution that's why all the colligative properties like relative lowering in vapor pressure depression in freezing point elevation in boiling point and osmotic pressure are remain uh, that uh, Mm, very less but sometimes they show generally osmotic pressure is uh, the uh, colloidal solution shows significantly tindal effect it is actually tindal effect is uh, in my words i can say uh, these are some words of ncert in my words i can say simply the scattering of light when pass through colloidal solution it is given here also when colloidal solution viewed at right angle to the path passes of light the path of beam is illuminated by bluish light the effect is termed as tindal effect so we can see the visibility of path of light visibility of path of light visibility of path of light when pass through colloidal solution is known as tindal effect you can see here this is solution no path of light visible but this is colloidal solution path of light visible so this visibility of path of light when pass through colloidal solution is known as tindal effect the cone is formed bright cone is formed this is called tindal cone this cone is called tindal cone right and the uh, tindal effect is due to the fact that colloidal particle they have relatively large size their size is according to the size of in comparison to the size of uh, that uh, light right so scattering generally occur when the size of particles of fraction is in the size of in the size of light this is condition for tindal effect also the diameter of dispersed phase particle is not much smaller than the wavelength of light it is almost must be comparable and the refractive indices of the dispersed phase and dispersion medium differ greatly in magnitude zismondi 1903 used tindal effect to set up an apparatus known as ultra microscope in ultra microscope intense beam of light is focused on colloidal particle contained in a glass and it is very clear to know or to see that particle when uh, uh, light uh, focused on it they scattered light and they brightened in that case they can easily uh, seen but only can be seen 
we cannot determine size and related information we cannot get si uh, related information by this microscope but we can uh, easily predict the presence of easily identify the presence of such particles such a molecule uh, such uh, such a uh, microorganisms through this microscope right here we can see these are theoretical way and these are some just common example where you can see uh, uh, that the Tyndall effect right you can also see nowadays it is very improved over the in the past time uh, uh, whenever in theater generally we can see whole path of light which has started from projector to the screen because of Tind uh, that uh, uh, that is called Tyndall effect actually so the way of path of light is visible that effect is known as Tyndall effect and that the uh, that medium must be colloid so that uh, 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 that uh, uh, path would be visible next is color of colloids the color of colloidal solution this all uh, we know that colloidal solution is scatter light so if we see a colloidal solution by different angle we can see different colors also the color of a colloidal solution depend on wavelength of light obviously wavelength uh, is inversely proportional scattering of light is inversely proportional to wavelength to the power 4 right to so the color of colloidal solution depend on wavelength it is obvious the wavelength of light further depend on the size and nature of the particles okay so the particle size and nature and wavelength so the size and wavelength must be similar so scattering takes place and nature of particles is very important the color of colloidal solution also change with manner in which observer receive the light obviously the size is different the scattering is different light is different for example milk and water appears blue when viewed by the reflected light and red viewed by the transmitted light Right, finest gold sol is red in color as the size of particle increase. It appears purple, then blue, and finally gold. So there's many ways. Whenever you, sometimes you find any oil uh, on uh, any place, and you can see different uh, uh, colors uh, on the surface of oil when we move around the oil. So it all depends on the position generally. The Brownian movement, when the colloidal solution are viewed under a powerful ultra microscope, the colloidal particle appear to be a state of continuous zigzag motion all over the field of view. The motion is known as Brown. The zigzag motion of the particle is known as Brownian motion. Zigzag motion. It is independent of the nature of colloid but depend on the size of particles and viscosity of solution. Smaller the size, lesser the viscosity, faster is the motion the brown and motion has been explained to me due to the unbalanced bombardment or i can say the interaction that collision will be dispersed phase particle and dispersal medium particle right so this zigzag motion is called brownian motion generally wherever you can find tendal effect in those effects you can also find some zigzag motions that is an uh, example of a uh, uh, in all cases, in all cases, wherever you find this ten, this uh, tendal effect in these uh, uh, path of light, you can also see uh, that movement, uh, uh, zigzag or randomly movement of many particles. That is an example of Brownian motion. Charge on colloidal particles. In peptidization, we had discussed about charge, how charge appear. And there are all uh, many ways how charge appear. Collider particle may carry and charge. This is very clear. The nature of this charge is the same on all the particles in a given collider solution. Maybe either positive or negative. Some examples here, like inorganic generally, uh, hydrated metallic oxide, basic dye stuffs, methylene blue solution, oxides, hemoglobin. They are positively charged particles. And negatively charged particles. These are just like copper, silver, gold, salt, metallic sulfide, acid dye stuffs, starch, gum, gelatin. So, remember it. Many examinations, competitions, the, that uh, nature or uh, charge on collides has have been asked. Right. Charge on the salt particle is due to the one more reason. 
one or more reasons due to the electron capture by salt particle this is very clear during formation of salt by bradic salts method and by many method oxidation uh, reduction hydrolysis uh, that uh, uh, electron may capture by salt particle during electro dispersion of metal and due to preferential adsorption of ion from solution this is also important preferential adsorption of ion that we had discussed in peptidization right so these are some reason of charge of electrophoresis this is called movement of coulomb this is what we call movement of coulomb when we put uh, two different electrons on two ends of a, a u shaped colloidal filled tube in that case the colloidal particles move toward one end and that is called electrophoresis you can see initial and final condition electroosmosis if we permit or if we try to move that colloid through semi permeable membrane in that case only through semi permeable membrane this person medium particle move so such this process is phenomena is called electroosmosis coagulation or precipitation the process of settling of colloidal particle is called coagulation settling it means the loss the loss of colloidal nature is called coagulation or precipitation of colloid whenever precipitation found in solution loss of solution nature so when the precipitation or coagulation occurs in colloid loss of colloidal nature so process of settling of colloid or loss of colloidal nature is called coagulation coagulation of lyophobic lyophilic solids uh, colloids are generally uh, um, um resist to uh, for coagulation but lyophobic colloids easily coagulate there are many process through which we can easily coagulate lyophilic by electrophoresis electrophoresis is general phenomena you can see in electrophoresis the colloidal particles can be collect at a point and every they collect at a point the distance between them is very small in that case they may coagulate by mixing two oppositely charged sol it is again very clear mixing two oppositely charged in that case uh, that diffuse layer uh, that uh, uh, neutralize in that case the uh, double layer uh, uh, the, the electrokinetic potential reduce presence of double layer insignificant in that case the particles may coagulate by boiling that again the in the boiling that diffuse layer again in boiling the diffuse layer again may uh, that uh, um, uh, due to get, that get in a kinetic energy and uh, the diffuse layer again may um, diffuse from the surface as well in that case that electrokinetic potential zeta potential again decrease and again that uh, double layer insignificant in that case there may again coagulation by addition of electrolyte by addition of electrolyte again it I mean it neutralize uh, that uh, uh, diff uh, diffused layer in that case electrokinetic potential decrease so in the, all the cases except electrophoresis Elect and the persistent dialysis. One more uh, method is here. So dialysis. Uh, again, dialysis uh, during uh, formation of a colloid. Uh, some electrolytes also remain in impurities. So in dialysis, persistent dialysis due to presence of electrolyte. The same reason. By the same reason, uh, neutralizing that uh, uh, neutralizing that uh, diffuse layer. So in all the cases except electrophoresis, the main reason. for coagulation is neutralization of diffuse layer loss of uh, uh, that uh, 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 reduction in the electrolytic potential or uh, zeta potential and insignificance um, or uh, that uh, um, that uh, um, double layer so coagulation uh, occur right ion responsible neutralization of charge and particle is called coagulating ion the electrolytic ion which is responsible for coagulation is called or neutralization is called coagulating ion the ion caused causes the precipitation of positively charged sol and vice versa is it has been observed 
that generally the greater the valence of flocculating ion added the greater is the power to cause precipitation this is called hardy's fulz rule you can see for coagulation of negative sol like sulfide sol hydroxide sol right the flocculating power is in this order 3 plus has more c power not ion more is the power more is the coagulation or flocculation coagulation flocculation are uh, that uh, similar term right similarly in the coagulation of positive side sol the flocculation power is in this order Fe C N six whole four minus P O four three five phosphate ion sulfate ion chloride ion you know already. The minimum concentration of electrolyte in millimole per liter required to cause precipitation of a sol in two hours is called coagulation value. The smaller the quantity needed, the higher will be the coagulation power of an ion. Millimoles per liter. coagulation of protective colloid charge and solvation here we are going to discuss about protective colloids or lyophilic colloids i am going to correct it right now so coagulation of lyophilic colloid generally lyophilic colloids are used as protective colloid that's why i uh, uh, write there uh, wrote there uh, that term right so charge and solvation of colloidal particle there because of charge they can be uh, they can be uh, remain at uh, some distance with each other as well as solvation they have great interaction with uh, dispersion medium so both are the important region that's why lyophilic colloids are so stable if they are removed a lyophilic sol can be coagulated and this is done by adding an electrolyte this is general process by coagulation process but required a uh, very high a uh, very uh, la uh, the, that uh, um, large concentration of electrolyte or uh, large amount of electrolyte and by adding a suitable solvent this is very perfect method for coagulation of lyophilic colloids when solvents such as alcohol and acetone are added to hydrophilic sols hydrophilic sols in which dispersion medium is water then dehydration of dispersed phase occur because these can these alcohol or acetone can pull water from them from uh, uh, that uh, colloid and the discondition a small quantity of electrolyte can bring about coagulation If, uh, once this uh, 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 can be done and afterwards it is easily coagulate by electrolyte any electrolyte and easily coagulation take take place by electrolyte right so this is coagulation of precipitation now here we are going to discuss about protective colloid lyophilic colloids are very stable but lyophobic colloids are not such a stability not have such a stability in that case they need to protect generally what happen in lyophilic colloids they are extensively solvated and hence they are colloidal particles are covered by a sheath of liquid in which they are dispersed that's why liquid dispersion medium sheath of dispersion medium we can see when that's why they can be used as uh, protective colloid when lyophilic sols is added to the lyophobic sol lyophilic particles form a layer around lyophobic particle and thus protect the lyophobic colloid from electrolyte lyophilic colloids used for this purpose are called protective colloid there is a number which is used to find the strength of protective colloid known as gold number it is defined as number of milligram of protective colloid that will just prevent the coagulation of 10 ml gold sol on addition of 1 ml of 10% sodium chloride we have a let we have a, a 10 uh, ml gold sol and in which we add 1 ml of 10% sodium chloride then 
what amount of protective fluid required to stop coagulation is called gold number so it is similar to coagulation uh, uh, it is it is uh, also uh, uh, less is the gold number more is the protecting power so lyophilic gold gold number gelatin have 0.005 0.01 ag albumin gum arabic these are some uh, starch uh, that have very less uh, uh, gold number right so this is generally not used so gelatin is best protective colloid emulsion as we have discussed in classification of colloids mixture of two immiscible or partially immiscible liquid is shaken a coarse dispersion of one liquid into other is obtained which is called emulsion generally one of the two uh, components is water the two type of emulsion generally oil dispersed in water milk and vanishing cream and water dispersed in oil examples of butter and cream different creams are there emulsion of oil and water are unstable and sometimes they separate in two layers on standing for stabilization of emulsion generally for stabilization of emulsion a third component required which is called emulsifying agent the emulsifying agent form an interfacial film just like as protective colloids emulsifying is just like protective colloids they form interfacial film uh, between suspended particles and the medium principal emulsifying agent for oil and water emulsion are protein gums natural synthetic soaps and water and oil heavy metal salts or fatty acid long chain alcohols and lamp black etc we have just sometimes required to test we have that emulsion which type of it is water and oil or oil and water so two important tests can be done to ensure or to of to find uh type of uh, colloid right type of emulsion the one says dye test so in the case of dye test if dye is water soluble dye will dissolve in aqueous phase and oil soluble dye will dissolve in oil phase it is very clear so if it is oil in water in that case oil in water so water soluble dye uh, will uh, dissolve in water phase so water that aqueous phase will uh, uh, look like color uh, dye color it show dye color right and dilution test one more important thing dilution test so if we add water in oil in water emulsion what would happen dilution occur and if we add water in water in oil emulsion what will happen we find drop of water over there right so these two tests there are many other tests but these two tests are very easy uh, to be done or uh, um, easy to find also right now some uh, examples of colloids around us we can see blue color of a sky due to dust particle present in air they scatter light and due to scattering of light we can see blue color partial scattering it is when completely scattering occur we can see red color now uh, we can see uh, no color actually now fog a fog mist and rain when a large mass of air containing dust particle is pulled below its dew point the moisture from the air condensed on the surface of these particle form fine droplets and these droplets being colloidal in nature continue to float in air in the form of mist or fog so this is the process of formation forming of fog they condensed and they suspended clouds are aerosol having small droplets of uh, water suspended in air on account of condensation in the upper atmosphere the colloidal droplets of water grow bigger and bigger in size until they come down in the form of rain sometimes rainfall occur when two oppositely charged clouds meet and it is the principle of artificial raining food articles blood blood is a colloid soil is a colloid and formation of delta when uh, river come in contact with sea sea water contains number of electrolytes and river 
also uh, in form of colloid generally and sea water contain number of electrolyte in that case when colloid may meet with electrolyte there is a precipitation occur which is called delta application of colloids there are many or various application of colloids in various uh, uh, field electrical precipitation of smoke it is very uh, important nowadays wide application of it is true to uh, from a, a motor bikes to um, a large uh, chimneys smoke is a colloidal solution of solid particles such as carbon arsenic compound dust in air the smoke before it comes out from the chimneys it leads through a chambers containing plates having a large opposite to the carried by smoke particles so the particle on comes in contact with these plate lose their charge and get precipitated and so this is called quartel precipitator this is a, a, a diagram general diagram of quartel precipitator smoke gases out between this this electrode high voltage it has and it gets precipitated ashes unwanted carbon particles and other things so this is an example of quartel precipitator it is generally also nowadays used in bikes purification of drinking water alums generally used to coagulate and suspended impurities medicines many medicines are uh, now time used which they act by adsorption right and adsorption uh, of a substance and colloidal nature of a medicines colloidal gold is used in intramuscular injections and there are many examples of it tanning cleansing action of soap and detergent we have already discussed photographic plates and film colloidal solution nowadays it is a digital uh, uh, time but uh, before we uh, this uh, we use a film for a uh, photography and that uh, uh, that uh, plates of photographic is uh, uh, that uh, layer uh, that uh, um, coated with coated with a silver bromide layer so that uh, colloidal solution of silver bromide right rubber industry latex is colloidal solution of rubber particle which is negatively charged rubber is obtained by coagulation of latex and uh, for coagulation electrolyte formic acid and acetic acid has been used for coagulation of uh, uh, this latex and industries also mm, many use of colloids are there so this is all about surface chemistry and uh, your physical chemistry of class 12 right thank you for today